presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look at the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle against crime and injustice. When the Clara M., last of the old clipper ships, was blown up by Teak Barnaby, Kent, in his guise of Superman, rescued Jimmy Olsen and Pug Flanagan together with most of the crew. He also succeeded in getting possession of the pirate treasure map that had been the cause of all the trouble aboard the Clara M. As our story continues today, Kent, Jimmy, and Pug are seated in the lobby of a small hotel in Panama awaiting passage on the next boat, due to leave the following morning. Listen. What do you got? What do you got? Touch, touch, touch. Gee, Mr. Kent, we almost lost our lives on account of that treasure map, and now that you've got it, we're not even going to go look for the treasure. It's not right. Yeah, it's a jip. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but I'm not taking you on any treasure hunt. And as for you, young man... Who, me? Yes, you, Pug. Don't lose sight of the fact that you stowed away aboard the Clara M before it left Metropolis. You had no business on the ship in the first place. Yeah, yeah, I know. But if it wasn't for me, you never would have found that secret compartment. And if you didn't find a secret compartment, you never would have found that map. Not so and... loud, Pug. Do you and everyone in the hotel to know we've got a treasure map? Ah, eh, these foreigners don't understand English. That man sitting over there, the one with the scar over his eye... Been listening to everything we said. So what? Wait, I'll show you. Hey, uh, pal, what time is it? Huh? I said, what time is it? No comprendo. Okay, pal, thanks. What'd he say? He said he doesn't understand. Yeah. See, what did I tell you? Yeah. Well, this isn't getting us anywhere. Pug, take this letter over to the desk and tell the clerk it must go off on tomorrow's plane. It's the complete story of the Clara M. sinking, and I want Mr. White to get it as soon as possible. Okay. And that's another thing, Mr. Kent. Huh? We have to go back to Metropolis, and instead of going to look for that treasure, why can't we go by plane instead of boat? If I've told you once, I've told you a dozen times. There are only two planes a week, and there are no passenger reservations available. I don't know why Superman didn't fly us back home instead of dropping us here. I'll bet he thought we were going after that treasure. I'll bet he did. Oh, possibly. Well, at least this adventure on the Clara M. proved one thing to you. Huh? What's that? That Superman really exists. You didn't believe it before, did you? Well, I, uh, I don't. Well, it? you can't now. Not after what he did when the Clara M sank. Why, if not for him, you we... You want to hear that guy at the desk slinging English around? Boy, would it hand you laugh. <laughs> I'm surprised that he understood your brand of the language, Pug. I don't get it. Mr. Kent means that you murder the king's English worse than any foreigner. Who, oh, me? Say, listen. Nobody never had no trouble savvying my lingo. I talk good. Well, you've talked plenty, Pug, but it's far from good. <laughs> when we get back to civilization, Jimmy and I intend working on you. Oh, I gotta get educated, huh? I gotta put on the dog. No, no, but a few lessons in grammar wouldn't hurt. And, uh, maybe a haircut. Uh, but all that can wait. You, uh, took care of getting the letter off? Yeah. That means we ain't going on no treasure hunt, huh? It means we aren't going on any treasure hunt, Pug. That's what I said. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, right now, we're all going up to bed. The boat sails at nine in the morning. We can't afford to miss it. There isn't another for ten days. Oh, I don't feel like going to bed yet. Ah, Jimmy, don't sulk. That treasure won't run away. As long as we have the map, we can search for it at any time. You mustn't forget that I work for the Daily Planet and can't run around digging up pirate gold without instructions from Mr. White. Well, why don't you wire him or, or call him or something? Yeah, why don't you? Because I know what his answer would be. Come home at once. Oh, okay. I suppose you know best. That's better. All right, now let's turn in. I uh, got connecting rooms. You and Pug can sleep together. Come on now. I'll be riding you out at 7.30 in order to catch that boat. Yeah. Quiet settles over the hotel lobby as Kent, Jimmy, and Pug retire to their rooms. Soon the lights go out, leaving only a dim bulb burning at the registration desk. The lobby is empty, save for the sallow-complexioned man with a scar over his eye, the man who did not understand English. Suddenly he rises, crosses to the desk, Looks furtively around and then addresses the clerk. Manuel, see si, Carlos? El Americana boy. Give you a letter for the plane. See? Si. Oh, see? Si. Si. Give it to me. No, no, Carlos, I cannot. You would like to make 5,000 pesos, Manuel? No. 5,000 pesos? See? Si. Maybe more? Maybe 10,000 pesos, Manuel? There is in the letter 10,000 pesos? No, there is nothing but writing in the letter. Then why do you want it? 
Because their writing is important. Come, give me the letter. No, no, I cannot. Listen, you fool. Those Americanos, the man and the two boys. They were talking loud because they did not know I understood them. They have a map. A treasure map. One that shows where much gold is hidden. Oh? I want to read the letter because it will tell me more about the map. And then what, Carlos? Then we will see. Who knows? Maybe your share will be 50,000 pesos. 50,000 pesos? See. Si. I would be rich, no? What do you think? Oh. You could stop working for the rest of your life. Oh. For Dios, you could buy fine clothes. See? Si. See. Si. An American automobile. And a gold watch. Here, here, here is the letter, but... but si, for si, hurry, si, hurry. Si, si. You, you think I will get 50,000 pesos, Carlos? Si, 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 si. Now, let me read this. Mm. What is it? What is it say, Carlos? What, what? Say what I wish to know. I will read the rest later. No, Carlos, the letter must go by the morning plane. This letter will not go by any plane. Carlos. No, it must go. I will lose my job. They will put me in prison. Quiet, you fool. What do you want with this job when you will have 50,000 pesos? But for stealing a letter, I will go to prison. You will go to prison for opening the letter, too. Uh, so what is the difference? All this talk about prison is stupid. What is the name of the American who sends this letter? Clark Kent. What room is he in? Carlos, I do not like this business. Now it is too late. The letter has been opened and I have it in my pocket. What if I should tell Senor Kent that oh, you no, gave it No, 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 you would not. What room is he in? Two, two fourteen. Give me a key. Carlos. Give me a key. What, what are you going to do, Carlos? I am going to get the treasure map. But how can you? Senor Kent is in the room. He will not be there. You will call him on the telephone and say to him that he is to come down to the lobby. For what reason should he come to the lobby? He will make a reason. Let me think. Ah, see. Here it is. You will tell him there are some papers to be signed before he can leave on the boat tomorrow. But there are no papers. Of course not. When he comes down, you will say you have been unable to find the papers. You will tell him you are sorry. You will call him in ten minutes, Manuel. And do not make any mistakes. Meanwhile, in the room adjoining 214, Jimmy and Pug are already in bed with the lights out. Off in the distance, a freighter coming into the harbor sounds his low, mournful whistle. Listening to it stirs Pug's imagination. Suddenly, his eyes light up in the darkness. Hey. Hey, Jim. What do you want? I've been thinking. I'm thinking and go to sleep. I ain't sleepy. I've been thinking about that map. Mm. You know, we could go look for that treasure ourselves. Just you and me. Oh, you're crazy. Go to sleep. Yeah, I'm crazy. Like a fox. Look, suppose we can't don't want to go look for it. What's to stop us? Oh, go to sleep. All we gotta do is snitch that map and we oh, gotta... What? I said all we gotta do is snitch the map. Now listen, Pug. You better get one thing straight right here and now. If you're gonna travel around with Mr. Kent and me, you don't steal things. She can hear you. I don't care if he can. Now stuff your head under the pillow and go to sleep. Uh, you gotta get up early. I told you I ain't sleepy. Well, then keep quiet and let me sleep. I don't have to go back to Metropolis. He can't boss me. Shut up. Well, I don't have to. I'm my own boss. I can go where I like. If I want to look for treasure, I can look for it. You're looking for a punch in the eye unless you shut up. I want to sleep. Okay, okay. Hey, Jim. Supposing we snitched the map just for the fun of it. Oh, sleep. That'd be a swell gag. In the morning, he wouldn't be able to find a map, and he'd raise the roof. What do you say I snitch it, huh, Jim? Yeah. Huh? Hey. What's that bell ringing? Tell her. Yeah, it must be in Mr. Kent's room. Hello? What? Is it Mr. Kent for me to do it tonight? Oh, very well. I'll be right down. Hey, Jim. You hear that? Jim. Yeah, he's asleep. Oh, Kent's opening his door. Now he's going down to the lobby. This is my chance to cop that map before he gets back. Only once I get my hands on that map. Then I have the laugh on Kent and Jimmy. Jim? Hey, Jim? Ah, he's asleep, all right. Now, just sneak out of bed, grab the map, and beat it before they know what's happened. Oh, 
Them springs make an awful racket. Now, where's the door to the next room? Oh, here it is. This is going to be easy. I don't quite understand why it was necessary to get me down here in the middle of the night to sign some papers. Why couldn't they be signed in the morning? What sort of papers are they? Declaration of Bagad, Senor Kent. What? The authorities are very strict, but I must apologize. I cannot find the papers. Oh, it doesn't matter because we haven't any baggage. Is that all? Si, senor. Well, then, good night. Good... What's that? I, I did not hear anything, senor. Sounded like the squawk of a parrot. Uh, si, si, one of the guests said the parrot. Sometimes in his sleep, he makes the peculiar noise. The parrot. Oh. Well, good night. Buenas noches, senor. Buenas noches. Something funny about his calling me down to sign baggage declarations. He knew we didn't have any baggage. I told him that when we registered. Oh, well, maybe he forgot. Yeah, might as well look in on Jimmy and Pug before I turn in. <laughs> Both those kids would give their eye teeth to go treasure hunting. Ah, so would I. That map looks like the real thing. Ah, here's the door to their room. I'll just peek in. Oh, both seem to be fast asleep. Oh, Wait a minute. There's only one in that bed. It's Jimmy. Where's Pug? That's funny. I'd better wake Jimmy up and ask him. Jim. Mm -hmm. Wake up, Jimmy. I'll go to sleep. It's Mr. Kent, Jimmy. Oh. Time to get up? No. Okay. No, Jim, no, it, it isn't time to get up. I just wanted uh, to know what happened to Pug. Pug? Yes, he's not here. Not here? Well, what do you mean? Well, just that. I looked in on you to see whether you were both all right, and Pug wasn't in bed. Wait a minute. Jump and What's the matter, Jim? The map. The treasure map. What? He didn't want to go back before I fell asleep. I remember now. Oh, Mr. Kent, this is terrible. It's awful. Now, it... wait a minute. Wait a minute. Calm down and tell me what you're talking about. The map. He said he was going to steal the map and look for the treasure himself. What? I told him he was crazy to go to sleep. I never thought he'd do it. You mean you think Pug took the treasure map from my room? I'm afraid so. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Come on. If he did, I'll whale him good when I catch him. Is it here, Mr. Kent? No, it's gone. Honest? Yes, it was in the inside pocket of my jacket. Now, look, Jimmy, let's see if we can get this straight. When did Pug talk about taking the map? Just before I fell asleep. Uh -huh. That couldn't have been more than ten minutes ago. What did he say exactly? Well, you know, we were both a little sore because you said we couldn't go look for the treasure, but I got over it and Pug didn't. Yes? He kept saying he could find that treasure himself if he had the map and all that sort of stuff. And then what? Oh, I guess I fell asleep and... Oh, he snitched the map out of your room. Didn't you hear anything? I don't think I was in my room at the time. The desk clerk called me down to the lobby to sign some papers. Uh, well, you better go back to sleep, Jimmy. Pug can't have gotten far with the map. I'll find him. I can't sleep now, Mr. Kent. Uh, you might as well try. I'll find Pug and bring him back. Don't be too hot on him, Mr. Kent. He doesn't know anything. Okay. I don't blame Pug a bit for wanting to go on that treasure hunt, but he's got to learn not to take things into his own hands. Chances are he headed for the harbor to stow away on a southbound boat. I'll stop at the desk and ask the clerk if he's seen him. Something is wrong, Senor Kent? Oh, uh, yes. One of the boys with me seems to be missing. You didn't by any chance see him leave the hotel, did you? A thin, tow-headed boy? No, Senor, I did not. Where would he go in the middle of the night? Well, I don't know. Well, I'll look around. In case you do see him, keep him here till I return, will you? Si, Senor. Well, the little fellow was smart enough not to go out the front way. Probably climb down the fire escape. Well, I'll find him if I have to search every boat in the harbor. I think I'd better search him around the waterfront. As Superman. And see whether I can spot him. Up! Up! And away! Red cloaks spread like the wings of some strange bird. Superman flies through the darkness in search of Pug Flanagan. Meanwhile, back at the hotel, Jimmy Olsen has dressed and is hurrying down the steps to the lobby... And the sound of hushed voices stops him short. Gee, I hope I can find... What is the treasure map, Carlos? I have it, don't you worry. There was a little trouble. Trouble? What do you mean? It is nothing. Why do you look so pale? Because I do not like this business. You will have to like it now, my lady. Now listen to me. When I went to the room to get the map, one of the boys was there. He tried to scream, but I put my hand over his oh. mouth. He could not leave him there, so I took him away with me. He up like a tiger he was. He hear it? Right. What have you done with him? He is down in the cell, locked in the storage bin. Senor Kent is looking for him even now. Carlos, we will both go to prison. Not if you do as I say. I have made arrangements with Sanchez. 
I want the big fishing boat to leave for the island where the treasure is at midnight. Sanchez, eh? See. Si. Once we are saved, you can release the boy. No one will suspect that you have anything to do with it. I do not like it. But you will like 50,000 I think I've heard enough. So Pug didn't steal a map after all. It was Carlos. I can't see him from here, but he's probably the guy who was listening to us talking. I guess the first thing to do is find Pug down the cellar. Get out the back way through the fire escape, but I've got to work fast. Good thing the fire escape is right outside this window. Raising the window, Jimmy climbs out on the fire escape and, keeping in the shadow of the building, descends to the yard behind the hotel. In a moment, he finds the door leading to the cellar. It sure is dark down here. I have the faintest idea where the storage bin is. Oh. What's that? Oh. It's either an animal or... No, I know what it is. Pug trying to yell with his mouth gag. Oh. The storage bin must be over there to the left. Oh. This must be the bin. Locked at all, just a piece of wood stuck through the hasp. There, that's it. Pug. Mm, mm, mm. It's Jimmy Pug. Here, let me get that gag off. Mm. There. How's that? Oh, thanks a million, pal. What I'd rag you, I mean, it's tough to breathe. Where's a guy that slapped me in here? Let me get my hands on him. I'll tear Take him up. Take it easy. You've caused enough trouble as it is. Who, me? What did I do? I sneaked into Mr. Kent's room to get that map just for a gag. This bozo grabs me, pulls me around like I'm a sack of potatoes, slaps a rag over my mouth, and then tosses me down here in a clink. What did I do? We'll take care of what you did or tried to do later. Right now we've got something else to think about. The fellow who put you down here was the same one you thought didn't understand English. Huh? All the time he was soaking up that talk about the treasure map. He's got it now. And he's sailing on a fishing boat owned by a man named Sanchez at midnight. Oh, yeah? That's what he thinks. Where's Mr. Ken? Out looking for you. What time is it? I don't know, but it must be about 10.30. And we got plenty of time. Plenty of time for what? To see to that boat don't leave the dock. And how are you going to do that? Easy. We'll sink her right where she lay. Sink her? Are you crazy? Not me, pal. All we got to do is sneak on board, open up the sea cock, and she'll sink like a hunk of lead. Maybe we ought to wait for Mr. Kent to come back. Nah, that's just wasting time. Come on, this is a pipe. Just like rolling off a line. Pug, there are at least 20 fishing boats down here. How can we tell which one belongs to Sanchez? We got tongues, ain't we? There's a guy coming off one of the docks. We'll ask him. Hey, buddy! See. We're looking for a tub owned by a guy named Sanchez. Where's she lay? Uh, Sanchez? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, La Paloma. It's La Paloma. Where is it, mister? Where? Uh, Sanchez, uh, La Paloma. Oh, he's pointing to it. Uh, okay, yeah, thanks, buddy. Thanks. Yeah. See you there, Jimmy? The fourth duck. Hey, she's big, ain't she? Big for a fishing boat. Yeah. Now what do we do? We sneak on board and give it a word. Come on. Follow me. Yeah, we're running in luck. Ain't nobody on deck. Hop aboard. Yeah, but take it easy. If we get caught, we're in plenty of trouble. We ain't gonna get caught. Now listen. Make for that companionway when I say three. And keep low. One. Two. Three. We made it. Now what? Now we gotta get down into the hole. This boat ain't got more than two or three in the crew. That makes less chance of us getting caught. Okay, let's go. We're taking an awful chance, Pug. Ah, this is a cinch. Hey, down this way. All right. He's one of our sea cocks. Now all we gotta do is open her up. Hey, she's tight. Uh, I can't budge her. Let me try. Okay. <laughs> It is tight. Yeah. Wait a minute. What's that? Sounds like motors. It is. Hey, the boat's moving. She's pulling out. Pug, what do we do? Yeah, this thing is jammed tight. Can't budge it. Let me try it, Pug. Okay. It is tight. Yeah, and how? Hey, wait a minute. What's that noise? Sounds like a boat engine. It's this boat. We're shoving off. Pug, what do we do? We gotta scram fast. Come on. No. No, wait. The guy's standing at the top of the companionway step. But, Pug, we gotta get off. We just got him. I know. Too bad we can't get that big cock open. The old tub wouldn't go far. Well, we can open it, so why talk about it? Pug. Yeah? I'm gonna walk right up those companionway steps and ask them to let us off. They can have the treasure map. Take it easy, pal. I got another idea. Follow me. Where you going? Never mind. 
Listen to what? Just listen. Huh. The motor stopped. No, I stopped it. But how? Turn off the gas and rip that line out. It'll take them plenty of time to fix it, too. They're coming down to find out what's wrong. We gotta make a break for it, Jim. Wait till I get away from the steps. All right. Now! Quick, Pug! Break off! Come on! Up the steps! There's a man on deck. We gotta get by him. Let go of me. Let go. Put that gun on me. Oh, oh, oh. I kicked him in the shin. Up in the dark. Quick, Jim. Go ahead, Jim. Hop up. I'll follow you. They can't catch us now. Run to the hotel. We'll get Mr. Cannon. Oh, oh. What's the matter, Pop? I twisted my ankle. I can't run. Here. I'll help you. Oh, you'll beat it back to the hotel. Go ahead. Turn on your life. Come on. Put your arm around my shoulders. Beat it, I said. They'll catch you, too. Oh, they won't. You can hobble. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, you ain't got a chance unless you drop me and run, Jim. Don't, don't be a dope. I'm not leaving you in that time. Oh. See? We're off the dock already. We're losing in the dock. Yeah? Come on. Besides, we... Okay. Ain't gonna hurt much? Yeah. Oh, why don't you drop me? Shut up. They'll never find us down this dark alley. Oh, I might have to go and pull a stun like this anyhow. Don't worry about it. Hey, huh? Wait. This is a blind alley. It, it doesn't go anyplace. Just a blank wall. That means we're stuck. I'll be the gym before they come, no, will you? No, keep quiet. Don't move. Maybe they won't come in the alley. Here, I saw it. Don't breathe, Bob. Come on, Now we have Oh, this is all my fault, Jim. I got you into this. I'm just no good. Shut up. Maybe they won't find us. I'll give them coffee, thank you. That's what I see. Now we speak to good. Hey, let go of me. Go easy on him. He's got a bad ankle. Maybe it's broken. Uh, You have plenty more broken before I am through with him. I wouldn't be too sure of that, my friend. Pug, it's Superman. Take your hands off those boys. Where are you? Never mind who I am. Take your hands off those boys before you run into trouble. And he means trouble, mister. Put the light on him, Santa. That won't do you any good. Oh. He wears a fancy dress cut. <laughs> Go back to your masquerade party, Americano. This is none of your business. I'm making it my business. Who are these men, Jimmy? Well, uh, that fellow Carlos has the treasure map we found on the Clara M. The other one, Sanchez, owns the fishing boat they were sailing on to find the treasure. For the earth, I will kill you. No. Oh, you're breaking you, my arm. I told you to keep your hands off those boys. I warn you, I have denied. You can have a machine gun for all I care. Sanchez, yeah. give it to him. Come on, Sanchez, give it to me. Yeah. Oh, not bad. Now I'll give it back. Boy, look at him slap that guy around. Oh. That finishes Sanchez. Now, Carlos, it's your turn. I will stab you. Go ahead, try it. Uh, what? Impossible. Look, Pug, the knife was broken on Superman's chin. You had good chance, Carlos. Now I'll take mine. Oh, I... He's out like a light. I'll bet he's got the treasure map in his pocket. I'll look. See, I was right. Here it is. All right. Now you and Pug get back to the hotel with the map as fast as you can. Mr. Kent's waiting there. Oh, but Superman, Pug's got a sprained ankle. Yeah. Couldn't you fly us to the hotel? Well, I suppose I could. No, on second thought, I can't. I have something I must do. You can manage, but go straight to the hotel. I don't stop on the way. Oh, we won't. Thanks a lot for helping us out. We were in hot water until you came along. You sure are handy to have around, Superman. <laughs> you wouldn't need me if you both didn't manage to get into so much trouble. Well, so long. So long, Superman. So long. <laughs> Gee, he's a swell guy. Yeah. Hey, we better get moving before these two bandits come, too. Give me a hand, Jimmy, huh? Okay. Now, just take it easy. All right. There you are. Here. You know, Jim, there's one thing I, I can't get through my beam. How come the Superman is always there when we need him, huh? I don't know, Pug. Unless he just knows when trouble's happening. You see, he's got powers in Ah, 
out for that, Jimmy. Huh? Don't lean too far over that rail. You may fall in. Oh, I could stand a swim. <laughs> oh, I'm getting hot waiting for the ship to sail. You hot too, Pug? Yeah. I'm burning up, Jim. Hey, when's she going to pull out? Oh, in a few minutes. Anyway, hot as you are, you wouldn't want to swim in these waters. Oh, why not? It looks well, clear and blue. Yeah, I know it does. It's full of sharks and barracuda. Huh? Big enough to take your leg off. Boy. No kidding. That's right. Tropical waters are very dangerous, so just you behave yourselves or over you'll go. That applies to you particularly, Pug. I don't want another episode like the last. I said I was sorry, didn't I? And anyway, if I hadn't gone into the room to get that map, that guy Carlos would have skipped with it, and we never would have caught him. Pug's right, Mr. King. Yeah. I know, I know. That still doesn't excuse him for trying to take the map. Well, that's all gone and forgotten. <sighs> oh, look, boys. They're casting off. Here we go. Oh, they're waiting for someone to come up the gangplank. Huh? See him? It looks like a messenger. Hey, you can't. Hey, you can't. He's calling you, Mr. King. Yeah. Here, boy. Are you a kid? Yes, that's right. I have a message for you. Oh, thank you. Here, take this. Hey, what's your demographic? We'll be sending you a message, Mr. King. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Oh, what's it say? I... Uh, nothing very much. Ah, uh, he's covering up. Oh. Is it important, Mr. Kent? No, no, it's just silly. What does it say? I'll read it to you. If you value your life, don't sail on this ship. Wow. No kidding, Mr. King. Did it say that? Yes, but... Oh, it's just someone's idea of a joke. Probably our friend Carlos. And anyway, it's too late to get off. We're pulling out. Oh, I'm hungry. Let's go down and have breakfast. Come on, Jim. Come on, Carlos. Well, Pug, what'll it be? Bacon and eggs? Yeah, it suits me fine. How about you, Jimmy? Oh, I'm not very hungry. Oh, Jimmy, stop worrying about that message. I'm sure it was just a feeble attempt on the part of Carlos to get us back on shore. Well, I know, but ever since we've had that treasure map, we've run into trouble. I think there's a curse on me. <laughs> There'll be nothing but skin and bones on you if you don't eat something. Come on, now, bacon and eggs? Oh, all right. Uh, hey, Mr. Kent, what's that under your plate? Huh? Where? Where? Oh, that's an envelope. Hmm, that's funny. Open it up. Well, I'll be... Now what, Mr. King? Just one word. Printed in big letters. What's now the word? What will it be? Bacon and eggs? Yeah, that suits me. Yeah. And how about you, Jimmy? Oh, I'm not very hungry, Mr. King. Now, Jim, you mustn't worry about that note I received. It's a lot of silly nonsense. What did it say again? Oh, just something about not sailing on this ship. It said, don't sail on this ship if you value your life. Sounds pretty serious. Sure. Yeah, now, it's just as I told you. Carlos probably sent it in order to lure us back on land so that he could get the map. But whatever it is, we've sailed, so too late. In another hour, Panama will be far behind us. Now, come on, how about a, a couple of fried eggs, Jimmy, and a rasher of crisp bacon, huh? Well, okay. That's a boy. How about you, Pug? Bacon and eggs all you want? Me? I'm hungrier than I thought. I think I'll have a... Hey, Mr. Kent. Yeah? What's that under your plate? Yeah. Under my plate? It's an envelope. Oh, that's funny. Oh. No wonder. Open it, quick. Now, take it easy, Jimmy. Take it easy. What's it say? Just one word. What? Beware. Hey, this ain't no joke. You see, Mr. Ken, I told now, you. Now, calm down, both of you. Act as though nothing had happened. Hey, ain't that good an actor. What are we going to do? Just sit tight for a moment. Whoever's responsible for this note is on board the ship. Now, you ordered breakfast just as though everything were perfectly normal. I'm going to have a talk with the captain. I'll be back shortly. Captain Estero? Uh, si, senor. What can I do for you? My name is Kent, Captain. Clark Kent. I'm a reporter on the Metropolis Daily Planet, one of our leading American newspapers. Oh, see, si, I've heard of the Daily Planet, senor Kent. I thought as much. 
Uh, now, uh, Captain Estero, what I came to talk to you about may seem a little strange. Well, I'm afraid I do not understand what you mean, senor. Well, uh, as you probably know, I took passage from Panama with two young boys. See? Uh, a few minutes before the ship sailed, I received this note. Here, read it. Tell me, who delivered this note to you, senor? A messenger. But that's not all. I found this under my plate at the breakfast table. There's nothing on it but the one word. Beware. Yes, I see. Can you explain these warnings, Captain? Well, uh, being a newspaper man, Senor Kane, you know that these are very trying times. I need hardly remind you that uh, most of the world is at war. It's best not to ask too many questions. Well, the Captain, if sailing on this ship involves some danger, I should know about it. I'm responsible for two youngsters. Well, I understand, but uh, I do not think there is any danger. Well, then why the notes of warning? Who sent them to me? That I'm afraid I cannot answer. But you know who's on board. You know the passenger list. Well, this is a very small passenger list. This trip, senor, we are uh, carrying cargo. What sort of cargo? I have told you, senor Kent, uh, under the circumstances, it is best not to ask too many questions. That is all. But, Captain, I don't I'm want... sorry, but I must leave you now. I must go up to the bridge. You will uh, have to pardon me. All right, I'll leave. But I want you to remember that I'm an American citizen. And so are the two boys with me. You see, senor. Hmm. I wonder what's behind all this. Hmm. He didn't seem particularly surprised at the nature of those messages. Might as well stop over at the purser's office and find out just who's on board. In case anything does happen, I'd like to know with whom I have to deal. In the meantime, I don't want to alarm the boys. The Kent's been gone for 20 minutes, Pug. Breakfast is ice cold. Now, don't worry about him. Why don't you eat? Oh, I'm not very hungry. Oh, here he comes. Sorry I took so long. Oh, Jimmy, you haven't touched your eggs. Oh, I was waiting for you. What happened? Not a thing. Captain agrees with me that it's just a gag. Gag? Mm-hmm. Who would be pulling a gag on it? Yeah, bunk him. This ain't no gag. Mr. Kent, this is a plot. <laughs> what kind of a plot, Pug? I don't know, but it's a plot. Uh, you've got a very vivid imagination, Pug. It's running away with you. Now, how about finishing breakfast, and then we'll go up on deck and play some shuffleboard, eh? Yeah, that's a sissy game. I want to steer the ship. Well, I'm sure the captain would greet that suggestion with cheers. Oh, did you see the captain, Mr. Kent? Uh-huh. Didn't I tell you I saw him? Yes, but I have a feeling you're hiding something. Jimmy, you're worse than Pug. And the way you've been staring at the other passengers here in the dining room. I'm just interested in knowing who our shipmates are during this trip. Then why don't we go over and introduce ourselves to them and find out who they are? I don't need to, Pug. I was just talking with a purser about them. Say, you mean you think one of those other passengers sent you those notes? Oh, of course not, Jimmy. I told you that was just a gag. Hey, look at those two dark men with the black hair. Huh? They look suspicious. Oh, don't be silly, Pug. They're a couple of coffee growers from Brazil. What about that gray-haired man there? And the girl with him? Well, he's a doctor, I understand. Just a look. Come on, before Mr. Kent comes after him. You know the way to the hole? You'll find out. See what the means. This is a big ship. If we get lost, Pug, we ain't gonna get lost. Just follow me. I'm used to finding things. We can get Pug. Yeah. That's the door up ahead. The door to what? To the cargo hold. You wait a minute. What's up? Sorry, Pug. I gotta get this iron door open. Help me lift the latch. But take it easy. No, no, it don't slide. It lifts up. Yeah, it did. Now we got it. Nobody heard us. Now nah. well, we gotta get the door open. Now pull. Here. Okay. Slip inside. It's dark in there, Pug. Yeah. I got a flash. I bought it from the cabin. Pull the door shut. But easy. Easy, 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 Jimmy. Now what? Well, I switched the flash on. Yeah. Well, nothing but sacks of sugar in here. Sugar? That can't be. Come on, we'll take a look. Wait a minute, Pug. What's the matter? I hear footsteps. Yeah, you're right. Stop down behind these sacks. Quick. Stop right outside the door, Pug. Think he's coming in? If he does, don't move. Pug, he's locking us in. That's what it sounded like. That's what it is. He's gone away. We're trapped in here. Let's try the door. Come on. Come on, shove. 
<laughs> She's locked, all right. We better start banging. I won't do us no good. Unless somebody's passing. We can't stay down here forever, Pug. Come on, let's start pounding on the door. No, wait. Before we do that, let's see what's in them sacks. That's what we come down here for, ain't it? Yes, but what do we got to lose? Here, grab the end of this sack. We yank it out of the pile and rip her open. Okay, pull. Come on. Pug, look out there, falling on top of you. Oh, oh. Pug. Pug, where are you? Pug. He's buried under the sack. I've got to get him out. Pug. Pug, answer me. Oh, I can't move these sacks fast enough. They're too heavy. I need help. Help! Help! Open this door! Oh, they're falling on top of you. Oh! Pug. Pug, where are you? Pug! He's buried under the sacks. i got to get him out. Pug! Pug, answer me. I can't move these sacks fast enough. They're too heavy. I need help. Help! Help! Open this door! Help! Help! Bruising his knuckles against the heavy iron door, Jimmy valiantly tries to summon help to free Pug from beneath an avalanche of heavy sacks. Meanwhile, three decks above, well out of earshot, Clark Kent waits for the boys at the shuffleboard court as the ship clears the harbor and heads for the open sea. Well, I wonder what's keeping Jimmy and Pug. I think they'd be interested in seeing the boat pull out of the harbor. Maybe I'd better go down and get them. Well, here comes one of our passengers. The young lady we saw in the dining room. Good morning. It's much more than just a good morning. It's a wonderful morning. Aren't you the gentleman traveling with the two boys? Uh-huh. And my name's Clark Kent. How do you do? I'm June Barrington. How do you do? You've probably heard of my father. Not Dr. Michael Barrington, the surgeon? That's right. Oh, then you're English. Right again. Dad and I have been in Africa organizing hospital units for the army. Oh, that's so. We're going back home now, and everyone's decided this was the safest route. Mm Mm-hmm. Ordinarily it would be, but uh, I think you and your father should know that queer things have been happening aboard this ship. What do you mean, Mr. King? Oh, now, don't misunderstand. uh, It may not be serious at all, but, you know, being a newspaper man, I'm always suspicious. Now you haven't got the suspense. What is it that's happened? Well, since boarding the ship, I've received two warning notes. One by messenger that said not to sail, and one under my breakfast plate that said beware. I've already spoken to the captain about it, but got nowhere. That's very strange. Of course, as you probably know, there are only eight passengers on board. You, your father, three of us, two coffee merchants, and an elderly woman. That is rather unusual, isn't it? Well, we're carrying a large cargo. A cargo the nature of which the captain refuses to reveal. You think perhaps it's contraband, Mr. Kent? Well, I can't say, but I'd like very much to know. Couldn't we find out somehow? Don't say anything. It comes a sailor. Don't you just love traveling by boat, Mr. Kent? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. There's, there's nothing like it, Miss Barrington. I guess it's safe now. As I was saying, couldn't we find out what the cargo is? Only by going down into the hold. Well, then why don't we? Come on, get. Well, Jimmy and Pug are supposed to meet me here at the shuffleboard court. Well, it won't take long. Come on. All right. If the captain ever finds out, he's not going to like it. Much. That leads to the forward hole. Oh, I'm just quivering with excitement. Hmm. That iron door up ahead is the one we want. Wouldn't it be funny if the cargo was done? What's the matter? Oh, I heard a muffled cry. Listen. Yes. I heard it. It's coming from behind that iron door. Someone's locked in there. Quick. Oh, lucky there's only a latch on it. Stand back, Miss Barrington. Jimmy! Oh, one of your boys! But Jimmy, what happened? What are you doing here? Pug, he's under the sack. What? They fell on him. What? He's found him. Yeah? Take him to my cabin. It's 22 on C deck. At once, please. Have your father look him over, will you? I'll I'll get the other one. Can you walk, Jimmy? I, I think so. Find Pug. Yes, yes, sure. Don't worry. I'll find him now. Don't you worry. Go ahead. Well, that's it, Jimmy. Just take it easy. We'll manage. Huh. I had to 
get her out of the way because this looks like a job for Superman. Pug buried under those sacks. No time to waste. Uh, I'll have him free in a moment. Uh, this stuff isn't light. Jimmy probably tried to move it but couldn't. Ah, there we are. There he is. Now to lift him out. Carefully. Yeah, that does it. Oh, the poor kitty's out cold. It's alive, thank goodness. The lucky thing that girl brought me down here. Another few minutes might have told a different story. I'll carry him up to the cabin as Clark Kent and her father began. Are they all right, Father? Yes, nothing serious, June. Jimmy's knuckles are bruised and he's exhausted, but he'll pull through. What about Pug? Is that his name? You found him just in time. He might have suffocated if he'd been down there much longer. Well, I... I can thank you for that, Miss Barrington. But we never did find out what the cargo is. Well, yes, we did. You see, I, uh... I broke open one of the sacks. I, uh... I have a sample wrapped in this piece of paper. There we are. What does it look like, Dr. Barrington? Hmm. Nitrate. Mm-hmm. That was my guess. What's nitrate? A substance used in the manufacture of explosives. So that's what this ship was carrying. That's why there were only eight passengers on board. In the light of this discovery, Mr. Kent, the two warning messages you received take on new meaning, I should say. Oh, why should I be the only one to receive warning? Yes. Why? You say there were eight passengers? Mm-hmm. And you and your daughter, Jimmy, Pug, and myself, two coffee merchants, and uh, an elderly lady. Hmm. Has it occurred to you, Mr. Kent, that you and the two boys are probably the only Americans on this ship? Well, that's no doubt true, but I'm... And being the... Americans, you were the only ones warned to get off? You mean that something's going to happen to the ship, Father? It rather looks like that. Hadn't we better tell the captain? Uh, he, uh, he knows we're carrying nitrate, Miss Barrington. He also knows about the messages of warning. But if we're in danger... We've been in danger before, Yes, Jimmy. I know, but... Uh, come in. What? Jimmy, I thought you were supposed to rest. I'm okay now, Mr. Kent. I wanted to find out what was happening. Uh, Jimmy, this is Miss Barrington, Dr. Barrington's daughter. We, we introduced ourselves coming up from the hose, didn't we, Jimmy? Yes. What's cooking, Mr. Kent? What was in those sacks? Nitrate, Jimmy. Something used to make explosives. Wow. That's nothing to get excited about. Oh, Miss Barrington looks excited, and so do you. Well, what are we going to do? A very sensible question, Jimmy. Have you any suggestions, Dr. Barrington? Nothing very constructive, I'm afraid. I suppose we could hold a meeting with the passengers on board and apprise them of the situation. And there are only three besides ourselves. The two coffee men and the old lady. Well, I think they should know. Yeah. All right. I'll get the two men. Uh, Miss Barrington, suppose you and Jimmy locate and escort the little old lady to this cabin, will you? I believe the purser said she's in C-33. Right you are. Come on, Jimmy. And try not to let any of the crew know what's growing. Don't worry, we won't. That's six bells, isn't it, Jimmy? Yes. No, it's not so well. Hmm. What captain did we discover our little old lady was occupying? You mean the cabin? Yes. Number 33, right here on sea deck. Must be at the end of this corridor. Mm, I hope she can stand the shock of learning there are tons of nitrates right under her. Oh, here's number 33. Shall I knock? I guess so. No. Wait. What is it? Put your ear close to the door. All right. Is there anything? Sounds, sounds like a bird chirping. No. It's a wireless key. Someone's sending a message. What do you mean? I know Morse code. I learned it from Sparks on the car M. Maybe I can follow it. Oh, I think you're just imagining things, Jimmy. What would a little old lady be doing sending wireless messages? I don't know, but I'm sure I heard... Start it again. It's a bird, Jimmy. Oh, listen. This is what it says. Our position, midnight, 150 miles due north of Colon. Everything in... Readiness. We'll contact you again hourly. Listen. This is the cabin number 33. Shall I knock? I guess so. No. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Put your ear close to the door. All right. Listen. 
Sounds like a bear is chirping. No. It's Morse code. Someone in that cabin is sending a wireless message. Oh, Jimmy, how fantastic. What would an old lady be doing? Maybe I can understand it. I know some Morse code. Well? I'm getting it. Ship will be 150 miles north of Kalan at midnight. Everything in readiness will contact you hourly. It stopped. Jimmy, what does it mean? Somebody in that cabin sending a message telling where this ship will be at midnight. But why? I don't know, but I've got a good idea. Look, Miss Barrington, you go up and get Mr. Kent. I'll stay here to see that nobody leaves this cabin. Oh, but Jimmy, you must be wrong. That little old lady wouldn't be sending wireless messages. Please, Miss Barrington, go get Mr. Ken. All right, but he'll think we're both crazy. Wireless messages. Why, I never heard of anything so silly. I'm crazy about this. If it wasn't Morse code, I'll eat my hat. Ship will be 150 miles from Kalan at midnight. Everything in readiness. In readiness for what? Oh! Did I frighten you when I opened the door? Oh, no. I mean, I... I... You wanted to see me, young man? Why, no. I mean, yes. Yes, ma'am. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. That's right. I think it was very nice of you to be with me. Listen, Jimmy and I were supposed to invite that little old lady to the meeting of passengers. Yes? We got to the door of her stateroom, and I was just about to knock when Jimmy said he heard Morse code. What? That's what he said, Morse code. Where is Jimmy? Waiting outside the cabin door. He told me to come up and get you. Good for him. Where's the cabin? Here, I'll show you. This is the corridor, and the cabin's at the end of it. Mr. Kent. What is it? But he's not there. Who's not there? Jimmy. I left him standing right outside that door. He, he's gone. I don't get excited. Is this the cabin? Yes. Number 33. Huh? What do you think happened to Jimmy, Mr. Ken? He, he said he was going to stay. Oh, I'm sorry to disturb you, madam, but I'd like to speak with you. I'm one of the passengers. Oh, just a moment, please. Mr. Ken, you think... Quiet. I was just lying down for a few minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, quite all right. Won't you both come in? Passengers on a ship should get to know one another. Don't you think, Mr. Kent? Ask her about Jimmy. I beg your pardon? Uh, we were planning a meeting of all the passengers, and we sent one of my young charges down to ask you to attend. Have you seen him? Oh, yes. He was a very polite young man. But I explained to him that climbing the steps is quite a hardship for me. I'm not a spring chicken, you know. But he was here? He spoke to you? Yes, he said he was sorry I couldn't attend the meeting. Oh. Well, I guess that's all. Thank you very much. Oh, you're quite welcome, I'm sure. Mr. Kent. Don't say anything. All right, you can talk now. I, I don't quite know what to say. I, I'm speechless. Well, there's one thing I don't understand. If Jimmy thought it was important enough to send for me, why did he knock at her door and tell her about the meeting? She seemed like a nice old lady. I, I didn't see any wireless set in her cabin. No, neither did I. It was a trunk and a suitcase, that's all. Ah, uh, we'll probably find Jimmy up in my cabin, ready to explain everything. I hope so. Did you locate the two coffee merchants? Oh, yes, yes. And neither of them speak a word of English. Your father made a valiant attempt to get them to understand, but I'm afraid he failed. Ah, here we are. My father, is Jimmy here? Jimmy? Why, no. Didn't you send him to get one of the passengers? You haven't seen him, Dr. Barrington? Not since he left with June. I knew it. I knew it. June, what's the trouble? Jimmy seems to be missing, Doctor. Yes. He and your daughter went down to invite that elderly lady to our meeting, and Jimmy thought he heard a Morse code signal coming out of her cabin. He sent your daughter to get me. I'm sure... When, when we arrived, he was gone, and the lady told us he'd invited her to the meeting. I'm sure something's happened to him. I... Nonsense. He must be somewhere on the ship. Well, maybe in his own cabin with Pug. No, I just looked in there. Pug is alone, sleeping. Yeah. I'd better search the ship. Jimmy has a habit of stumbling into trouble. Well, I'll help you. You stay here, June, in case he returns while we're gone. If he does, Miss Barrington, keep him here. Don't worry, I will. I'm quite certain you locate him, Mr. Kent. After all, he couldn't just appear. As Clark Kent and Dr. Barrington prepare to search the ship from stem to stern... One of the white-clad dining room waiters slips silently along a corridor and knocks on the door of stateroom 33. His hands drop the phony voice and open up. All right. All right. Why did you come here? When I told you it was dangerous. I would like to know how things are going. Have you made contact? Yes. Midnight is the hour. 
Since you're here, you might just as well know that we had a close call. What do you mean? Well, the Americans, the men and the two boys, the ones we want to get off the ship. Yeah, what about them? One of the boys was listening at the door while I was making contact. No. Don't worry, he's safe, locked in that trunk. What are you going to do with him? That remains to be seen. As you know, we cannot fail. Yeah. Nothing must stand in our way. Yeah, yeah. So if necessary, we will get rid of the trunk. You understand? In the meantime, take the suitcase and throw it overboard. Be careful you're not seen. It contains the virus, sir? Yes. It will not be necessary to make contact again. I think it may be dangerous to have it in this cabin. No, no, no. Who would ever suspect you? An old lady you almost fooled me when you came into the dining room. That wig, that dress. Never mind. Do as I say. Wait, we have another man on board, haven't we? Yeah, in the engine room. Good. I may need both of you later on. Take the suitcase now and get rid of it. Yeah. Wait. Who is it? Sorry to bother you again, but I'd like to ask you a few questions. It's the American. Just a minute. Here is the key to the adjoining cabin. Wait there until I go. I may need you. Be quiet. All right, take off. Just a minute, please. I'm sorry, I kept you waiting. Oh, that's quite all right. Now, this is Dr. Barrington. Oh, how do you do, Doctor? How do you do? Won't you come in, please? Yes, thank you. I must apologize for my cabin. It's quite disordered. Uh, uh, madam, you may think this is a little strange, but we're still trying to find a young boy I inquired about some time ago. Well, I don't understand. Well, you were the last person who saw him. I just spoke with him for a moment. He was very polite. Yes, yes, I know. You mentioned that before. Young man, you're rather impertinent. Mr. Kent, what was that? Sounded like it came from the trunk. What's in that trunk? Why, my personal belongings. Would you mind opening it? Well, isn't that an unusual request? A lot of unusual things have been happening. Open the trunk. Young man, I must ask you to leave my cabin. Not until that trunk's open. Why, you young whippersnapper? Dr. Barrington, would you mind getting the captain? You don't have to bother. I don't want to create a scene. I'll open the trunk if that's all you desire. I have the key here in my handbag. Yes? Right here. Put your hands up, both of you. Kids, what? That's a very strange-looking key with a muzzle on it. Never mind the comments. Back up against the wall. And... Yeah. Find Dr. Barrington's daughter and bring her here. Tell her that her father wants her. You don't have to mix my daughter up in this. Unfortunately, you're all well mixed. You failed to heed my warnings not to sail on this ship. So you must suffer. Oh, so you were responsible for those messages, eh? That explains a lot of things, including your masquerading as an old woman. Shall I go? Yes. Leave the wireless set here. It will no longer be necessary to get rid of it. Bring the girl quickly, now. Why don't you open the trunk now and release the boy? I can see no harm in that. Here is the key. You open it. And remember, I have you covered. You may take the gag off the boy's mouth. That's very kind of you. Wait a minute. There we are, Jimmy. I was hot in there. And Mr. Kent, that old lady, she's a man. Yes, we know. Back against the wall, all of you. Ah, come in, Miss Barrington. Oh. It's quite all right, Jimmy. It's quite all right. Stand against the wall, Miss Barrington. Close the door, Hans, and set up the wireless job. I deeply regret having to cause any of you embarrassment and discomfort, but unfortunately you brought it on yourselves by virtue of your own curiosity. We're not interested in listening to speeches. This speech will interest you, my friend. It will interest all of you very much. What do you mean? Precisely at midnight, this ship is going to the bottom of the ocean. And unfortunately, you are going with it. Oh! The virus is ready. Very well, Hump. Make contact. Stand against the wall, all of you. I have a very nervous finger on the trigger of this gun. Better do it, folks. All right, Kim. Oh, this is terrible. Hump, close the door. Yeah. Lock it. Now open that suitcase and set up the portable wireless. You will try to make contact. Very good. Now, my friends... What do you mean, friends? What sort of a game do you think you're playing? It is far from a game. Believe me, I deeply regret having to cause any of you embarrassment, but unfortunately you brought it on yourselves by virtue of your own curiosity. We're not interested in listening to speeches. This speech will interest you. It will interest all of you very much. What do you mean? Precisely at midnight, Dr. Barrington, this ship is going to the bottom of the ocean. And unfortunately, 
You are all going with it. Oh. The lioness is ready, sir. See if you can make contact. Yeah. You don't think you can get away with this, do you? Who do you think will stop me? This ship is traveling through protected waters. <laughs> that is very humorous, Doctor. <laughs> very humorous. I have made contact, sir. Good. Tell them everything is well in hand. Midnight is the hour. We will disembark 15 minutes before. That is all. Yeah. I wonder whether you realize that three passengers on this boat are American citizens. Of course I do. But I gave you a fair warning. Warning that you chose to ignore. My responsibility is at an end. Why are you seeking this ship? A very sensible question, Miss Barrington. Deserving of an answer. Simply because it is carrying a cargo of nitrate. A cargo that must never reach its destination. So you think nothing of taking the lives of more than a dozen people to destroy a few tons of nitrate? Yes, Doctor. Just as you think nothing of taking the lives of a dozen guinea pigs to perfect a new medicine. You're a murderer. A cold-blooded murderer. I'd give my right arm to have Superman here now. He'd pick you. Don't lose your temper, Jim. It is best for all of you to remain calm. We have more than an hour to wait. The message has been sent. Go up on deck and keep a sharp eye out. You know the signals? Yes. Report the moment you sight them. Very well. Look here, man. Is there nothing that will appeal to your sense of decency? You must not be too harsh, Doctor. I am a servant of the state. It is not for me to give the orders, simply to carry them out. If you had not attempted to interfere with me... You would have been given ample opportunity to escape by a small boat. That would have been very considerate of you. I think so, Mr. Kent. But as it is, you have gambled with that opportunity and lost. Perhaps not. The cards haven't all been dealt. Unfortunately for you, they have. And I am holding the ace. Before we leave this doomed ship, all of you will be bound and gagged. I can take no chance of failure. Wait a minute. What was that noise? A storm coming up. We expected it. We'll serve our purpose admirably. Ships have been lost at sea before during violent tropical storms. You're a fiend. Nothing but a fiend. Do you hear me? A fiend. June, June, darling. He's going to murder us, Father, in cold blood. <laughs> With thunder rolling across the dark ocean like a warning of impending doom, Clark Kent watches the minutes slip by, knowing full well that to assume the role of Superman will be to reveal forever his double identity. Meanwhile, in the excitement, Pug Flanagan has been forgotten. But back in his cabin, Pug has awakened, found himself none the worse for his accident in the hold of the ship, and, unaware of what has transpired, starts searching for Kent and Jimmy Olsen. As he reaches the deck... A bolt of lightning momentarily cleaves the darkness, and he notices Hans standing at the rail. That waiter knows where Jimmy and Mr. Kent are. I'll ask him. Hey, you uh, pal. Yeah? You haven't seen a big, tall guy and a kid about my size tapping around, have you? Uh, looking for someone? Uh, yeah. Uh, my friend Claude Kent and my buddy, Jimmy Olsen. You ain't seen him, have you? You are the other boy who is traveling with Mr. Kent? Yeah. Hey, what are you looking at me that way for? I, I was just uh, surprised. Uh, come, I will show you where you can find Mr. Kent. You know where he is? Yes, I do. Is Jimmy with him? Uh, the other boy, yes. But uh, come, I will show you. Oh, boy. Yes. The storm is going to break soon. Yeah. Why are you stopping? Because I smell a rat, that's why. What do you mean? There's something phony about you taking me to where Mr. Kent is. You're too anxious. <laughs> It is just that I wish to help you. Come. Let go of my arm. You are a very strange boy. Never mind about that. Let go of my arm, I said. Listen, you little swine. Come along or I will throw you over, boy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you can't get away. I'll break every bone in your skinny butt. That's what you think. Oh. Dirty. I can still kick, mister. Try this one. Oh, darn. I'll be kidding you. Come back. Come back, I say. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Up. It's his hands. Just a moment. Don't any of you move. What's the matter? You're white as a ghost. Close the door. Speak up. What happened? The other kid. He got away from me. What are you talking about? Mr. Kent, Pug. Uh, 
I was standing at the rail, watching for the signal when the skinny kid, he came up and asked whether I had seen Kent. Yes, yes. Well, I told him I would take him to where Kent was. So, we started across the deck, but he got suspicious. So, I, I grabbed him, but the little swine, he kicked me and got away. Good old Pug. Shut up. Pug will tell the captain. Shut up, all right. Don't you dare lay a hand on him. I'll take care of all of you later. Hunt, where did the boy go? I do not know. I lost him in the darkness. I can look for him, but I thought it best to warn him. You should never have let him escape. What could I do? I told you before, he kicked me. All right. I'll find him then. You won't kick an elderly lady. Here, take this gun. Yeah. Don't be afraid to use it. And shoot to kill. You understand? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Lock the door behind me and don't open it for anyone. I will be back shortly. Yeah. Remember, Hum, shoot to kill. My pals, Claude Kent and Jimmy Olsen. And I seen this guy standing at the rail. He was dressed in white, just like a waiter. This is very strange. The waiters are not permitted on the passenger deck. Well, he was there. So I asked him if he'd seen Mr. Kent and Jimmy. He gets all excited and tells me he'll take me to where they are. But it didn't sound right to me, so I said, it's me. Then he grabbed him by the arm, and he starts to get tough. That's when I hauled off and kicked him. I do not understand this. You're the captain of this tub, ain't you? Of course, I am the captain. Well, there's something screwy going on. I do not know. What is this uh, screw? Uh, there's something's wrong. Where's Kent and Jimmy? Why did this guy try to give me the rush act? We will investigate. We will find this weather and demand an explanation. Vaminos. Huh? I said Vaminos, which means in my language, uh, let us go. Oh, okay. What's that? Uh, someone is knocking at the door. Good evening, Captain. Oh, good evening, Senor. Oh, there you are. Oh, me? Yes, we are having a little party in my cabin. We have been looking for you. Looking for me? Yes. Mr. Kent and Jimmy wanted to be at the party. We sent a waiter to find you, but he said you refused to come. Uh, don't you want to join us? I'll be. You mean you sent that waiter to get me? You mean Mr. Kent and Jimmy are in your cabin? Uh-huh. Now, won't you join us? <laughs> you see, it is nothing at all. That waiter didn't say he was inviting me no place. <laughs> Possibly he didn't understand. But what difference does it make? Mr. Kent and Jimmy are waiting for you. We are having a wonderful party with ice cream and, and cake and candy. Okay. But if I see that waiter tomorrow, I'm going to tell him a thing or two. I'm sorry I, I bothered you, Captain. <laughs> it is nothing. It so, is nothing at all. <laughs> Good night, Captain. Buenas noches, senora. Buenas noches. Mr. Kent and Jimmy will be very happy to see you. Uh, how long have they been in your cabin? Oh, just a short time. Ain't it kind of late to be holding a party? Oh, no. We plan to have a big blowout at midnight. A very big blowout. Oh. Oh, well, that's nice. What's that? Someone is knocking at the door. Good evening, Captain. Well, it's not you, senor. Oh, there you are. Oh, me? Yes. Uh, we have been uh, looking for you. We are having a little party in my cabin. Mr. Kent is there in the gym. Well, I'll be. We sent one of the waiters to find you, but he said you refused to come. You see, it is nothing at all. You mean to say Mr. Kent and Jim are in your cabin? Uh-huh. We are having a lovely time. Won't you join us? Oh, sure, but why didn't the waiter tell me instead of getting tough? Oh, he probably didn't understand. Doesn't make any sense to me, but I suppose it's okay. I'm sorry I bothered you, Captain. It is not. Good night, Captain. Buenas noches, senora. Buenas noches. Mr. Kent and Jimmy will be very happy to see you. How long have you been in your cabin? Oh, just a short time. Ain't it kind of late to be holding a party? Oh, no, no, not on board ship. We we plan to have a big blowout at midnight. A very big blowout. Hmm. Sounds like a storm coming up. Yes, it does. Now, I must be careful going down these steps. 
I'm not as young as I used to be. I'll, I'll help you, lady. Oh, thank you. Just take it easy. That's it. Oh, you're a perfect little gentleman. <laughs> ah, there we are. Oh, my cabin is at the end of this corridor. Wait a minute. Why, something the matter? Yeah, plenty. You ain't no dame. What do you mean? Just what I said. You're just wearing them clothes to make out you're an old lady. What in the world are you talking about? Listen, I wasn't born yesterday. I had to hold your arm coming down them steps. You've got muscles like a man. And I know how to use them, too. Let go of me. Not this time. Oh, no. Oh, Kick me, will you? Yeah, here's another one. There. I'll fix you. Stop. Uh, two guys like you could hold me. Now come back here. You won't get away. That's what you think. Try chasing me in our Go ahead. Try. When I get my hands on you. Don't make me laugh. Got away. He was right. Can't run in this outfit. Well, it just means speeding things up a little. Hands, open. You found him? Close the door. Well, I found him, but he got away. Oh, boy. You won't be so happy in a short while. Go up on deck, Hans. Keep a sharp lookout. We won't wait until midnight. I will make contact immediately and tell them to come ahead. What is your hurry? The boy knows I'm not an old woman. Every minute counts. Give me that gun. You're having a chance now. You'd better give up. When I need your advice, Mr. Kent, I'll ask for it. Until then, keep your mouth shut. Go ahead, Hans. Yeah, I go. Now I want to warn each one of you that from this moment on, I'm a desperate man. If I fail in this mission, my life means nothing. So you see, I have very little to lose. Don't move. If you do, it will be the end for all of you. But even as the message that will hurry the doom of the ship and all on board crackles through the air, Hug Flanagan, having made good his escape, realizes that the situation calls for quick action. Unwilling to trust even the captain, he has equipped himself with a length of rope and is determined once and for all to find out whether Kent and Jimmy Olsen are being held prisoners in the cabin of the bogus old woman. Clutching his coil of rope, he slips silently to the deck above the cabin, reaches the rail, and leans far over. That's the porthole right below. I can see it lit up. All I gotta do is tie the rope to the railing, shinny down, and take a look. I wish this tub wasn't bouncing around the way it is. Oh, I better hurry. That storm's gonna hit us soon. There, she's tied tight enough. Can't take a chance of her slipping. Because if she does, I'm a dead pigeon. Okay, Flanagan, over you go. Wow. Almost lost my balance that time. Gotta be careful. Maybe I better tie the end of the rope around my middle. Just in case. Yeah, yeah that's better. Now the shitty down to that porthole. Can't hear me. This is gonna be a cinch. Just a couple of feet more. Hey, wait a minute. Porthole's open. I don't want to stick my foot through it. I better slide over a little. Yeah, that does it. Well, I hope nobody spots me when I look into the porthole. Gotta be careful. Easy now. Easy. Holy smokes. There's Mr. Kent and Jimmy and that white-haired guy and his daughter flying up against the wall. And that phony dame's got him covered with a gun. What will I do? I can only burst the light and give Kent a chance to sock him in the dark. Yeah, but how am I going to do it? I know. A rubber band and a nail. It's just as good as a bean shooter. It'll be tough shooting if hanging on to this rope. But I think I can do it. Up you go, flying it. While Pug climbs back up the dangling rope to go in search of a rubber band and a nail, the atmosphere in the cabin of the foreign agent grows more tense by the moment. Facing what he believes to be certain death, Dr. Barrington maintains a stony silence as he watches his daughter's wan, pale face for some sign of her cracking under the strain. Even Jimmy, accustomed to danger, seems to have given up hope. Only Kent is alert, for he realizes that unless a miracle happens, he will soon have to reveal his true identity and take matters into his own hands. 
Outside, the wind howls past the open porthole as the ship plows through a heavy sea to its doom. The storm's going to break soon, Mr. Kent. Sounds that way, Jim. I wonder what happened to Pug. I think by this time he'd have notified the captain. Don't waste your time thinking about it. I bet he didn't get away. I'll bet you did something to him. Perhaps. What difference does it make? It makes this difference. Thus far, all you've done is threaten the lives of innocent people. But I warn you, if any harm comes to that boy, you'll suffer for it as you've never suffered before. <laughs> Wouldn't you call that rather an idle promise? With you in the position you are in? I won't be in this position long. <laughs> Your confidence is very refreshing. It's beginning to rain. Yeah. Do you mind closing the porthole? Miss Barrington is getting wet. Not at all. Oh. Oh, I see. It's just a ruse to divert my attention for a moment. Close it yourself if you wish. No, wait. On second thought, I think it should remain open. Yes, leave it open. I may want to look out in a hurry. A little rain won't hurt Miss Barrington. She might just as well get used to being wet. How much longer have we to wait? Not long. Ten or fifteen minutes. Then what? Then I leave you to your prayers. I haven't bothered to ask, but I assume the plans are to torpedo the ship. Your assumption, Mr. Kent, is quite correct. Don't you think it would be the decent human thing to do to permit passengers and crew to get away in lifeboats? Unfortunately, that is not possible. There must be no survivors to tell how the ship went to the bottom. That you can well understand. I can understand only one thing. That men like you don't deserve to be called human beings. You seem to forget one thing. I gave you ample opportunity to avoid being a part of this. I warned you once before we sailed and once after. What more could I do? What about Dr. Barrington and his daughter? They are enemies. It's no use, Mr. Kent. It's no use talking to him. Poor Pug. I'm sure something happened to him, or otherwise he'd have brought help. Easy, Jim. Only ten more minutes. Stay right where you are, Mr. Kent. Don't move. Now listen, I don't know your name and I don't care to know it. But I'm giving you one more chance to act like a human being. What you do with this ship is none of my business, but what you do with the people on board is my business. I'm warning you, Kent. Don't try anything. Look, someone's at the porthole. Down on the floor! Get down! Orange tongues of flame stab the sudden darkness of the cabin, darkness that enables Clark Kent to become Superman and hurl himself bodily at the armed agent. But in a momentary lull in the storm, the sound of shots reaches the ears of Hans, standing at the ship's rail. Alarmed, he runs along the deck, only to stop short when he reaches the spot where a rope has been tied to the railing. What is this? A rope dangling over the side. Someone climbing up it. It's a good thing I brought a flashlight with me. So, it is that skinny kid. The one who got away from me. You, boy. What? Don't bother climbing any higher. I'm going to cut the rope. No, no. And when I do, you will drop into the sea. Too late, my boy. There. There it goes. You, boy. No use climbing any higher. I am cutting the rope. No, no. And when I do, you will drop into the sea. Please. Please. Too late, my boy. There it goes. Lightning cleaves the black sky and thunder crashes as Pug, unable to swim, drops like a plummet into the raging storm-swept sea. But through the open porthole of the agent's cabin, Superman's keen hearing catches Pug's last screaming call for help, recognizes it. In an instant, he is on deck, muscles tense, X-ray eyes searching the darkness. A shadowed figure runs across the deck, but faster than light, Superman follows him, clutches his arm. Just a minute. I heard a cry for help. Where's that boy, Pug? Who are you? Never mind who I am. Answer my question. Oh, uh, yes. Here's your answer. Oh. Oh. My hand's broken. Answer my question. Where's that boy? You're killing me. You're crushing my ribs. Talk and talk fast. He went overboard. Where? Which side of the boat? Stop it. Out. I'll be back to take care of you. I don't know whether I can find poor Pug in all this storm, but I've got to try. He's on the surface at all. He can't have floated far. Up! Up! And away! Like some giant bird, Superman wings out over the dark, turbulent waters. Red cloaks streaming in the wind. Sharp eyes scanning the surface of the sea for some sign of pugs. Jagged bolts of lightning rip across the blackened sky, followed by the crashing boom of thunder. 
Battling the elements as no one else could, Superman circles closer and closer to the wind-tossed water. Each second carries him further and further away from the ship. Hope begins to wane. Hug is gone. And then suddenly... What's that directly below me? A piece of driftwood? No, it's Pug. He's going under. Down, down. Okay, Pug. I've got you. Uh, he's unconscious. Better get him back to the ship in a hurry. Up, up, and away! the ship was going to be sunk in ten minutes. Then suddenly I saw a face at the porthole. There was a crash of glass and the light went out. That's when he fired those shots. And the face of the porthole, you do not know who it was? No, Captain Astero. It all happened too fast. Well, there is one thing of which we can be certain. Those two will not bother us. They are safe in Ireland. But what about Clark Kent and Pug? They've disappeared. I think we will find them someplace on the ship. And what about being sunk by a torpedo? If we are hit, there is only one thing to do. Take to the boat. In this storm? What else is there? Come. We will find Senor Kent and this boy you call uh, Pug. You don't have to look very far, Captain. Well, Mr. Kent. I'm happy to see you, Senor. What happened, Mr. Kent? I thought sure that guy killed you. When the light went out, his gun was pointing right at your chest. How did you escape? Well, I uh, I guess it was bad marksmanship on his part, Jim. Uh, how are the Barrington? Miss Barrington fainted, but she's all right now. Oh. Her father's with her in her cabin. Have you seen Pug? Yes, yes, he's safe and sound. That's what brought me up on deck in such a hurry. I heard Pug cry for help. One of our foreign friends was trying to throw him overboard. Incidentally, what happened to that pair? They are both in Ireland, senor. Oh, good. Now we can relax for a while. Oh, no, we can't. Not if we're going to be torpedoes. Jim, you'd better go down to the cabin and stay with Pug. Captain Mistero and I will watch things up here. Oh, gee, can I be with you? Well, Pug's alone in the cabin. And after what he did, I think he deserves some attention. What do you mean? Well, it was Pug who lowered himself over the side of the ship and broke that electric light bulb. Oh, no kidding. That's right. Boy, then he deserves more than attention. He deserves a medal. I'll go right down to him. In case anything happens, call me. I will. A very nice boy, senor. Jimmy? Oh, he's tops. Now, look, Captain. Jimmy's probably told you everything, including the possibility this ship may be torpedoed. See, si, but what I am to do, senor? Shall I give orders to turn back? I don't think that would help. I suspect the submarine lying in wait for us won't attack without a signal. If, as you say, the two men are in irons, there will be no signal. All we can do is watch and hope. Meanwhile, in the darkness of a forward hold, three decks below, a hushed voice rises above the sound of the ship's engine. And little yeah. You said some time ago that we have another man on board. Yeah, in the engine room. You think he will have enough sense to find out where we are? How can I tell? I still do not understand what happened. I told you that young swine, the skinny one, climbed down a rope and threw something into the portal. I caught him and cut the rope. At least we accounted for one of them. What good does it do us? Without our signal, Miller will not attack. We've got to get loose and free of these chains. You're wasting your time. Relax. Sure, sure. What difference does it make to you? This is my mission. I'm responsible for its success. Do you know what will happen to me if I fail? Quiet, quiet. Someone comes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I could not come sooner. What have you brought? A hacksaw. It's all I could find. Quickly. Start on this chain. Between my hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can't you go any faster? You think we have all night? Do the best I can. What is doing on the ship? Uh, I do not know. I heard you were an iron. I come as soon as I could. Yeah. There. Through. All right. Give me the saw. Yeah. I'll do the rest myself. Go back to the engine room. We, we don't want anyone looking for you. Yeah, well. When you hear the sound of a gun being fired, come at once to the lower deck. You understand? Yeah, I understand. Now go. Hold your arms out, Hans. In five minutes, we'll both be free. What happened after that? Well, when I ditched the guy who was making out he was an old lady, I figured something was wrong in this tub. Yeah, there was plenty wrong. Two foreign agents had us cornered in their cabin. Well, I didn't know that, but I knew something was rotten in Denmark. So I got me a hunk of rope, tied it to the rail, and went over the side. 
I'm telling you, Jim, when I saw you and Mr. Kent standing there with that guy pointing a gun at you, I nearly passed out. Boy, I want to... Wait a minute, Pug. Huh? Someone at the door. Shh. He's trying to open it. Get under the bed. Maybe the man who threw you overboard. Right. I'll get into bed. Sea fans. Yeah. We didn't have to bother them. No. Come on. We go to the forward deck and give the signal. Yeah. I do not think you will see any light, Senor Kent. No submarine in these waters would carry light. No, probably not. I thought I heard the purr of a motor launch. Huh? Oh, Jimmy, I thought I... Look, what are you doing here? Mr. Kent, there's two men, the agents. They got loose. What? No, it cannot be. Now, that's what I thought, but they came into our cabin. I made believe I was asleep. Yes? They said they were going to show a signal on the lower deck at the forward part of the ship. Hey, look. What's that light? Flashing on and off. That must be them. I will put an end to that. No. No, Captain, leave them alone. Huh? You're not going to let us get torpedoed, Mr. Kent. Listen. Hear that motorboat? Yeah. Yeah, I hear it. It's going to pick them up. But see, what are we standing here for? We must stop them, senor. Oh. What's that? A gun fired across our bow. In order to heave to. Don't pay any attention to it. senor. Trust me, Captain. I forgot to tell you, boys, that we have a visitor on board. A friend of yours, Jimmy. What? Friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Hey, have you been holding out on me? I don't get you, Mr. Kent. Superman is on board, Jim. Superman? No kidding. Where is he? Waiting to take care of these murderers in his own way. Now, you two stand here at the rail so you can see the show. Captain, I'd like you to go up on the bridge and shine your searchlight across the water amidship. But, senor, this is most unusual. I know, I know, but it's the best way. Very well, I will do it. Oh, where are you going, Mr. Kent? Tell Superman we're ready. The launch is on its way back to the submarine. Now, don't move from this spot no matter what happens. What do you think's going to happen, Jim? Gosh, I don't know. It's all kind of strange. What if something goes wrong? Oh, well, nothing can go wrong with Superman around. You know, I don't get this Superman business. How does a guy know where to find Look, it? Look, the church light's on. Oh, it sure lights things up. Get the up. I can see it. Look, Jim. I see it. And I see something else, too. What? White streak in the water. It's a torpedo coming right at us. Oh, it can't be. I tell you this. Look, it's right in the path of the light now. We're going to be hit. Jim. Up there in the sky, look. It's Superman. He starts He's diving down. Down in the water. Look at him, like a bullet. What's he going to do? He's going after that torpedo. Look, he's got us. Pug, do you see what I see? He's turning the torpedo around, sending it back at the submarine. There it goes. Right into the submarine. And so another Superman adventure ends with the enemies of law and order getting a taste of their own medicine. But there's bound to be something doing when Clark Kent, Jimmy, and their newfound friend, Pug Flanagan, return to Metropolis. So be with us when we begin a new, even more thrilling adventure with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted...